Hi, my name is Mary Neese. I have lived in Tennessee since 2003, moved here from the Philadelphia area. I was born right outside of Chicago. And we are right now in the McKinney Center where uh, we're gonna be talking a little bit about the show that's opening up on the 15th of October. It's going to be up all month, uh, comes down on this, uh, I think the last day is the 12th of November. So you have plenty of opportunity to come and look at this work. I've been interested in art since I was young. And I would doodle around in high school. I never took an art course in high school because I was busy taking a whole lot of other stuff to get ready for college. My mom would take me to the uh, Art Institute in Chicago. And uh, there, there is a big collection there because of a wealthy woman in Chicago. Uh, I think she was a financier's hus uh, wife and uh, she bought up a lot of Monet's haystack landscapes, which they have in their collection there, but they had them displayed the time, one of the times I went there as a kid. But he, sh he painted it in every different season, all different times of the year. His subject was not the haystack. There's haystack, haystack, haystack all along the wall, but his subject was the light and the effect of that. And he did that with color. I mean, that blew me away. And at that point in my life, I wasn't even imagining I would ever be an artist. I was getting ready to go to college uh, to study design and environmental analysis. I was really interested in how the arts could improve culture. Um, but I never imagined that I, you know, would be able to have the time or the skill to do fine art. Um, that has developed much later. Uh, so while I was raising kids, we had four kids, four kids under the age of four actually, with a set of twins. So, and I was a pastor's wife for a good part of those, about 40 of those years. So we were both very, very busy uh, with a whole lot of other stuff and um, valuable, meaningful stuff. So art was like low on the totem pole. I used to teach art history in the, in the grade schools just for fun as a volunteer. Um, but uh, under our vacations, I would bring my watercolors and I would always do landscapes. Such that, you know, when I did got my graduate degree and I was really trying to figure out what my voice was, what my work was about, um, I realized my last year in grad school, duh, that the landscape really was pretty critical for me. And it wasn't pretty pictures, like I said before, but it, it's an outer look. I'm very analytical. Um, uh, on my own, I can be very introspective and moody. Uh, it's just part of my personality. It's who I am. I've come to understand that better now that I'm older. It's great getting older. Oh, you learn so much more. <laughs> but um, I, I realized that the landscape provided for me a way of getting beyond all this chaos that's inside and looking to the horizon. I, you know, when I hung this show last, I think it was Friday, it really felt to me, in fact, I put it up on Instagram, this feels like a culmination. Um, this work is symbolic. It's coming out of a lot of deep personal study, um, hoping to be able to communicate some of that, even just in a gl glimpse. And my work will always be fed by what it is I'm reading and what it is I'm thinking about and studying. I'm not interested so much in realistic landscapes. I think my, it would be obvious that I'm doing landscapes in whatever I do. Even, when, even in the conceptual work. I want to abstract it more. Um, I want to learn how to be better at quick gestural abstractions with excellent color, excellent mark making, and a, a better value composition. Hey, I'm 71 years old, but I'm, I feel like I'm gonna be getting a whole lot better pretty quick. <laughs>
and the hot walk through the sand, uh, every step, um, depending on the promises of what God had given him early on and then progressively through his life. The one before that is also about Abraham, the prom that promise that was made to Abraham originally that kind of catapulted his whole journey. Uh, it was a covenant that God initiated and completed in chapter 15 of Genesis. And then at, all of that prefigures how that covenant was actually finally realized uh, on the cross uh, 2,000 years later. So that, the last one of that series is called Stake, on the Gr Stake in the Ground. This series right here of seven is from um, some study I did just a couple years ago in the book of Revelation. Uh, in chapters two and three, there's uh, a historical uh, prophetic uh, journey that's being talked about by Jesus, who's the one speaking in the whole book of Revelation, about seven historic churches that were actually on the ground in the first century, but also they represent all of church history, this progression of different types of churches. This series, I was trying to personally understand it. I wanted to understand where uh, I fit in this story and what warnings I need to take to heart and what encouragement I can take from it. And so, of course, there's a personal quest involved in all of that. But um, the whole reason why I do art um, is not just because I want to make pretty pictures. I don't get uh, my real drive from that. Um, what really moves me are the ideas behind this type of work. What I'm hoping to be able to do from that is not to tell the whole story, but to be able to summarize it in a way that might catch the heart of the viewer even just a little bit. That whole series is called the Psalms of Ascent, and it's a, a 15 psalm uh, collection of songs that fit together like a book. They're a volume that progresses, and uh, in fact, I, that's why I have these papers here. I've spent like decades studying these psalms, um, and I try to summarize them each down to one word, and then I try to look for patterns that are happening, there's present tense, there's past tense, there's future tense, and how do those fit in together? Um, there's also a, a pattern of triplets that happen. Every three has a certain kind of uh, low point at the beginning, and then um, the middle psalm of each triplet is statement of trust that the singer is voicing. And then the third of each triplet is a, re is a resolution and then it, we go to the next triplet and the problem is bigger, the trust is harder, and the resolution is more exciting. And that happens five times. And so that's why we hung them the way we did, uh, starting from the left as we read left to right, starting at the bottom, the, all, the, all the trouble um, psalms are on the bottom of each triplet, and then all the trust psalms are in the middle, and then all the resolution psalms are at the top. Now we are gonna have an opening here where you can come, I'll be here, uh, so I expect there will be questions. Um, the titles on each one of these explains a lot. Um, but I'd be glad to talk about the work that night. Uh, it's October the 15th from 5 to 7. I hope that people will come and be able to just let the work talk. Mm -hmm.